Podcast. We back another night. You know what I'm saying? We just got finished doing the, the Kids Speak podcast. So we're here. You know what I'm saying? Me, my man. We need, we need no introduction. You know what I'm saying? But for those who don't know him, it's my man, Coach. Uh, put that coach in front of that name. You know what I mean? Darvin Henderson. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't mind me saying the whole name. Believe no, go ahead, man. <laughs> you know, they need to look at my stuff anyway, exactly. man. That's my Facebook yeah. name. So. so, you know what I mean? So we here, man, with my man, uh, with, the, with the coach. Yeah, you know I mean, what's going on, man? What's, what's, going, what's going on? How you been doing, man? I'm good, man. Everything, man. Um, I know that's like a cliche to say, man, but when I say everything, everything, man. So I got my hands on, um, like the most recent things that's going to be done is um next Wednesday, um me, a couple players, and a couple other um people in the organization. We're going to be handing uh, dinners out to the homeless the day before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. You know, man. So yeah. I know I spoke to you, but you know, just to put it out there on air. You know, man, um, philanthropy is is very important to what I do, you know. So I I might wear eight, nine hats during the day, whether it's, you know, man, apparel, whether it's training, whether it's coaching, whether it's, um, you know, man, promoting, marketing, whatever it is, um, meal plan, meal plan, all that type of stuff. But that is a huge cornerstone of that, man, because I wanted yeah. to create my business and, and be able to do, you know, do enough or, or get to a certain limit you know, get to a certain point where I can help others around me, man, because I understand how it is being that kid or being that person, man. So when you get blessings, man, you just give the blessings, you know, away without expecting anything in return. Yeah, yeah. That's just how it is. So, yeah, actually, it's been like almost a year since we had you last had you on the show. Yeah, you was at, yeah. uh, was at, was at Starbucks last yeah. time you came on. Yeah. I mean, just like, you made the introduction, you know what I mean, see, see, talking to you, see to get to know who you, are, who you are, you know what I'm saying, as a person, you know what I'm saying, as, as a coach, you know what I mean, um, because uh, we originally met because you, you actually you have a, a seven on seven um, football team, football team mm-hmm. um, which you've been running for the past few years now, actually. Yeah, well, that you had, I mean, not running, but that's your team, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's still it's going strong, the God, be the glory. So, yes, sir. That's another hat. I forgot that I mean, I put coach in there, but the seven on seven AAU traveling organization that I have, you know, what I mean, it helps kids with exposure to colleges. Um, it helps them develop skills, timing, and the things that they're going to need during the football season. Um, as a former football player, you know, um, I understood how valuable it was, like the off, off-season skills, training, stuff like right. that, that was going to help you get acclimated to the game. So back, you know, I ain't graduate too far ago, <laughs> you know, but uh, I graduated high school in 2008. So back then, it was a little bit like your high school teams might have – joined with somebody else and got a little bit of work in, but it wasn't like AU, people wasn't traveling, they didn't have nationals, it wasn't that big. Now they have nationals at different places, um, Ohio, Miami, Texas, you know, man, you could play teams from all across the, um, the nation. And I think that's imperative, not only for the exposure, but it's the competition, you know, um, exactly. competition breeds competition. So. I mean, if I could get my guys or the guys in the area, the Mercer County area, wherever it is, um, and, and they're going against their their uh, counterparts in other states, different skill levels or whatever like that, is only one or two things that can happen. Especially because down south, they do they 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 because you know, the weather is different down there, so they 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 on it all year round. They yeah, they practice train all year round. They probably playing in the middle of the winter time. They down there playing ball. Yeah, you know what I mean, my well, 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 our season is, is over. You know, uh, come November, December, our season's over with. Yeah, up here, you know, yeah. the weather in there. It's not even in the December yet, man. <laughs> it's, it's hard to be outside unless you got a playoff game right now. You know what I mean? Um, exactly. You, know, you ain't gonna be out there, you know, hitting the work. So, so would you bring it on at seven on seven? You know I'm saying, uh, athletic traveling uh, football team, traveling team. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, have a lot of kids from the area that constantly, um, you know, focus on their, their skills and their potentials. 
You know what I mean? Taking things to another level. Yeah, yeah. And um, the first thing that I had to do with that, and even before I had the 707 team, I had the uh, football clinics. Right. Because, I mean, I had one-on-one training and everything like that, and that's great, you know what I mean? And um, I'm very appreciative. Um, but I wanted to to expand. And as an entrepreneur, your mind, or at least me, my mind is always going, what's the next? So I think <laughs> by the time somebody catches on to – Hey man, I see what you're doing. Like, or Darvin, you're doing it. I'm doing I'm something. Another, I'm on into yeah. another you're, level. You talk about that all you know the time. Right? You talk about that all the time. Like, <laughs> and I'm always thinking. As I move, I'm moving. And, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Staying ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm saying keeping things uh, moving constantly because if not, you fall behind. You know what I'm saying? Then you trying to catch up. Nah, but you nah. keep people trying to catch up with you because you're constantly moving. Exactly. You know keep your mean? foot on the gas. You know what I mean? Always keep your mind open. You know what I mean? So you're always thinking of, okay, this and that, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm setting up. You know, so with the 7-on-7 seven seven team, you know, I was a forward thinker, and, um, you know, I started out with the football clinics because I'm like, may not, everybody may not be able to afford um, the one-on-one training, um, even though, I, you know, I try to make it as convenient as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, you know, like you said, it's kids in South Carolina and Florida and Georgia in December getting that work and are just as hungry as our boys. But it's different between us being inside and, like, we got to wait for <laughs> spring to hit. Hopefully we get a good day and get some type of work. Exactly. And you getting it every day. Because I have former teammates and people like that that I know have played down south and also played in California. You know, so they don't have a season. It's whenever they're able to go, they're going to go, they're going to get work in. They're sending me videos. So in my mind, you know, Coming from that playing aspect in my mind as a coach, I'm like, man, if I could get them inside, if I could get a good group of kids, you know what I mean, together where they could compete against each other and push each other, you know, in a group setting, in an indoor turf facility, then that would be, you know, essential. So the first thing I had to do was commandeer a uh, field, you know. So once I got that, you mm-hmm. know, I kind of got the idea to spark, um, okay, well, I could have a seven-on-seven seven team. We could start a little bit earlier, you know, January, February, moving into the spring all the way into the summer. So about time when um, the teams and everybody, like your perspective, high school, wherever you're going to, is ready to to come together and you're getting ready for the season, you've already been working since January. Right? You've already been so working since December. The 707, that's the junior high and high school kids that you work with for the 707? Yeah, yeah. So my, my second year I had uh, two teams. I think it was like 15, 16 kids each. And like it's a blessing, you know, ain't no curses. It's, it's a blessing <laughs> and it's a little bit of work. So it's, it's just work, like with those two that, that, teams, it's that, like the first year was rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You gotta, you know, you gotta take your lumps. And not only are you the coach, and that's what I mean. I wear completely, you know what I mean, crazy hats. Uh you go from coach, then you gotta go from CEO. Then right, you gotta right. bring, you know what I mean? You gotta collect registration, you gotta fundraise, you gotta get uniforms, you gotta do all these type of things, you know what I mean? Just to be able to get to the door to compete. Right. Then it's the X's and O's. Then it's the X's and O's. You know, <laughs> then, you know, over time, once you start building a tradition where you expect to win, it's getting everybody to buy in and it gets the parents um, to 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 um, buy in to help, you know, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they're the one that's driving to practices. They're the ones that's paying for registration. I know him, he knows <laughs> my um my second year. I had uh, both of his boys on my football team, yeah. man, so. Um, you know, it's a lot of work. So getting them to buy into what you're doing. And I think that my fourth year has definitely been the best year to date with the 707 team with not only hosting our own tournaments in the Mercer County area right, Moody um, Park, right, at Moody, Moody Park, Park right. you know what I mean, with it, which is unprecedented because nobody's done that before, you know. And I'd like to say that, you know, I'm a forward thinker. And I'm an innovator, you know, so I know I ain't reinventing the wheels. Been people probably in other states and other places that's done it. But I'm like, this is what Mercer County needs. Right. And being a coach in the area, being in tune with those kids, being a former player in that area, you kind of know this is what needs to be done. How are we going to compete against these kids and da, 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 and all this type of stuff. You know what I mean? So quick shout out to Notre Dame football. I got three kids, um, Leon Jones, Jake Renda, and uh, Ricky Spro Pop. Um, that that made that was, finals, right? made it to the semifinals, semifinals. and they played play hard, the number man. three team so in the, the nation. You know what I mean? It, you know, even though and they, um, they, held they, they own. Even though know. it's not a Trenton school, they part of Trenton. I said Notre Dame always they been. Oh, it's kids from Trenton, Trenton there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, it's part of Trenton. I'm saying they they, uh, they 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 put it down on everybody this year. They was uh, they undefeated exactly. till they got to that last game. And, and you know. it was a big thing. Like, oh, they ain't gonna do that when they get to the playoffs. Oh, wait, you know, and that's been the consensus. I mean. So it's it's a true statement, 
But I'm like, these kids are different. I don't see these yeah. kids in the summer. I done been in the mud with these kids. These kids don't make plays for me. So I'm a firm believer. You know, I'm a motivator. So I'm like, look, as a player, I'm like, yo, you got to prove it to me. Right. So I don't care how many stars you got, what your scholarship offers, how big, tall, fast you are. I'm a man. We put our, you know, some people put on different, but we put our clothes on, one arm, one, one leg yeah, at a time. Yeah. So if you do, I do. I got the best, you know, we both have the best opportunity. It's going to come down to – uh, uh, who 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 got that dog in them? You know what I mean? Who gonna work hard? Who gonna grind? You know what I mean? Who gonna make the, be focused enough throughout all four quarters? You know what I mean? Maybe over time to you know be successful. So we are gonna rewind this a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said you graduated in two thousand eight. What school you graduated? What high school you graduated from? You went to high school. You went to high school. Mm -hmm. So what college you went on to after that? Monmouth University. I don't know. How many years you spent at Monmouth? Four. So you did your whole four years at Monmouth, mm -hmm. and then you got your you got a, a break that a lot of kids don't get opportunity to do. You yeah, gotta, you got drafted for the NFL. Was yeah. you a draft or you was a draft or you was a walk -on? Nah, it was um, uh, walk-ons, like college terminology, but like a preferred free agent kind free of agent. thing. Okay. You know, so after um, my career at Mama. Regardless of you, you had you said I determined, like, I'm going to make it to this next level. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've been, you know, I've always been a hard-headed kid, man. You look back at my <laughs> elementary school teachers, man. It was like, you know, I mean, they're older now, so they see what I am and where I'm at. So they like, oh, man, you were the, you know, you were a lovely kid. And I'm like, man, I was a knucklehead. And I was questioning everything you mm -hmm. tried to teach, you know. But as a, as a man now, looking back at a young, you know, Darvin Henderson, um, I've been trying to figure it out. And uh, even to this day, man, I'm always asking questions. I'm always reading. I'm trying to, like you said, I'm trying to stay one step ahead and I'm trying to figure things out. As a man, you can figure it out right now. As a kid, it's kind of, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're limited yourself. to the knowledge. Yeah, you got you to find know, yourself trying to the find yourself. You got all types of distractions. Video games, on. yeah. You learn about girls, you, you know, girls, all those yeah. types of things. <laughs> you know, it uh, kind of misconstrues you, you know what I mean? So you got to get back on target. But as a man, you kind of, okay, this is this, this is that. Okay, this is what I'm capable of doing. Okay, this is what I'm a, you know, and you kind of put steps together, man, and it's a beautiful thing when it comes to fruition, especially with, you know, something that you invest in, man. So, so, so what, what NFL team was you signed for, signed with? Um, I had a workout for the Philadelphia Eagles, the Carolina Panthers, and I actually signed a uh, contract with the York Capitals of the uh, Professional Indoor Football League. Mm -hmm. um, so... After after my college, um, after my college years, um, I mean, before that, I had, you know, took a shot to the knee, you know, unfortunately, and I had got injured. But I was determined, you know, to get back up on our horse and, uh, you know, get everything together. So after that, it was like training, getting back. And then I remember, um, you know, I was catching a river line. I was driving a bucket, you know, um, <laughs> no heat. So I got a winter jacket on, and the you know, and and it's twenty degrees. I, I can see my breath in the car, and I'm driving to the river line four or five days a week with the last little bit of money I got, maybe dollar fifty something like that, to catch a uh, the river line down to Pensalkin, uh, to train at you know the training facility I was training at. You know what I mean? Adrenaline Sports, man. Just so it was no guarantees or nothing like that, but just to get an opportunity at the dream, make sure that I was the best person that I could be, right, you know, right. so um, in, the, in the midst of that, you know, the Carolina Panthers hit my agent up the day before the draft, and they'd be like, oh, we got to need that wide receiver, we'll take him, so, you know, um, I had like three, four missed calls from my agent, but, you know, I'm a football player, so I was excited, but I'm the type of person like, all right, well, when I get the opportunity, I'm going to, you know, shine with a, and, and do what I have to do, so actually, the first first round, the last pick of the first round, they get Kelvin Benjamin, and I'm at home, my agent calls me, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, they're going to need 6'6 six, six receiver from Florida State, you know, or 6'2 receiver from uh, Monmouth University, you know what I mean? Right, and, right. and in my mind, I'm like, yo, I'm better than him. I don't even think he in the league no more. <laughs> no, no offense, you know, but I'm like, yo, I'm better than him. I need the opportunity, man. I don't, you know, I don't work too hard for it, you know, but it, it don't always come right. in a way, you know, that you so, you know, I was fortunate to, enough. Yeah. Exactly. So I was fortunate enough to get a workout with the Eagles. Did well for there, you know what I mean? They got me out of there. Uh faster than what I came, and then um, it was pretty much you ain't do nothing wrong. This is just a numbers game, you know what I mean? We'll see, boom, boom, boom. All right, so then I'm sitting at home, and I'm like, ah, I got to find something to do. You know, I'm working out, and I'm training. I'm in the best shape of my life. I just ran a 4 four forty bench press 225, 18 times, mm. so I'm ready. You know, I have wide receiver, and then, um, you know, I, I play in this professional um, – a professional, like, all-star game, free agent game, whatever yeah. NFL scouts was there, just to, you know, maximize my uh, possibilities. And then uh, I had, like, three catches in a game, and then it was this one uh, football 
I beat the guy off the line of scrimmage right away. It was a fade, you know, and he threw it behind me. And in my mind, I'm always like, playmaker. You know, I got to go make that play. I got to go get that ball. So in the midst of me running full speed, I tried to, you know, put on the brakes with one foot. And I was already kind of nursing, you know, an injury. Yeah, and, I, yeah, and that thing kind of buckled. And I knew right then and there, like, shoot. You know, and um, I got up and jumped to the sideline. And I'm like, man, you know, this is what it is. Um, so from there, like, my mind – Definitely went on that ride home, man. My knee all, you know, banged up. I got ice on it. And my mental was just like, you know what? What can I do um, besides, you know, playing football, catching passes, and physically doing it right. that's going to earn me a living that's going to, you know, that I feel as though uh, fulfilling my purpose, you know? So um, at the time I was teaching, I stopped teaching. Um, eventually I had stopped coaching, you know, doing everything. And I kind of, you know, bet on my, bet on myself, man. you know what I mean? Um, it was depression. I feel like I've been through things before in my life, you know? So it was kind of, I know it was eerie, you know, but it was kind of <laughs> like a, a laugh and like life, you know, right, you right, could work right, as right, hard right, as you right. can and do everything you're supposed to. This ain't the movies, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it ain't the movies. <laughs> and that's what you got to realize with life. But, the true test of a man or a person is how you get back up. So, yeah, I was knocked back down. Yeah, I had injuries, you know, and I had these things, and I had to realize also, like, where is God pushing me to and where is he staring me to, you know, and what's going on. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, I, I really had to hammer down what I wanted to do, and I figured um, I was good at playing. So, you know, I was – intelligent enough to teach you know so i was coaching and i'm like you know what if i could get these kids on the off season and train them and talk to them and motivate them and give them little details that i got at the higher level that most kids don't get with their ability right. then they could take it to the next level man so you know talking about three, four, you did, you yeah so yeah. talking about you know four or five years um later you know what I mean? like it's an opportunity um and i'm giving it to them and they're taking that with their talent and then just being successful, you know what I mean? Being successful as possible, man. So I look back now, see how far I came, you know, and where God st stirred me to, um, you know, and it's, and it's truly a blessing to be where I'm at now, you know, and then keep going. I'm yeah. already to the next level. Exactly. Yeah, because, I mean, like so you work with mad different kids in the area from this from the city, you know what I'm saying? Give them opportunities that they probably didn't think they would have, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And you, I, I know you see talent every day on the field, man. Yeah. Saying, not only this is on the field, but the potential they have in the, in the classroom, because that's a big thing, too. Mm -hmm. Making sure, you know what I'm saying, they, uh, their grades is a part as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, that's, that's you know, as a parent, I'm, you know, I love sports, but the books come first. <laughs> I, no, absolutely. Real short story. The first time I took the SAT, um, I remember it was a couple of scouts. It was Rutgers, it was Monmouth, and it was somebody else. And they came down, they pulled me out of class in high school at UN High. Excuse me. Um, and they're sitting there like, okay, well, Darvin, Darvin Hennon, like, so first of all, I'm taken back because I'm like, people are showing interest and they actually know who I am and I don't know these people. But they watch my film and they hold me to a high regard as a football player. So it's a heck of a feeling to be wanted. So that was the first thing. But um, I had took the SAT once and I didn't get the grade to accept a Division One scholarship. Mm -hmm. So it's a sliding scale that people got to realize with um, sports. And it's um, especially if you want to accept the scholarship, you got to be registered by NCAA.org and the clearinghouse and all that type right. of stuff. They got, they got certain criteria you got to meet. You exactly. Know, to so you need to have an SAT score and a GPA that kind of, you know what I mean, mellows out. So what my GPA was and my SAT score at the time didn't match it, you know, nor did I have enough of the classes to, um, you know, accept the scholarship. So when I tell you I made it hard for myself unknowingly in like my last two semesters as a senior, instead of chilling, I was taking African-American studies. I was taking literature classes. I was taking English. I was taking another mathematics. I was taking an accounting class just to fit that criteria. And I had to do well at it, not only just to get my GPA up, but then I had to take the SAT again, you know, to, um, to get to a certain level. And I remember the next week I had like two interceptions, had a great game and a scout came to see me again. So I'm like, I'm about to give him, you know what I mean? This game and I'm really going to be in there. And he literally like, he was like, I don't need it. We already want you. You need to get your SAT score up. And right then and there in my mind, I was like, I know I said it before, you know, people say it like a cliche. Oh, student athlete, student athlete, student athlete. You got to be a student athlete because you don't get through them doors. They don't care 
how many passes you could catch, how good you are, how fast you run. If you don't fit that criteria, they can't even get you in the door. You know what I mean? And I've seen very, very talented kids, man, maybe more talented than me at the time that um, didn't get through the door. You know what I mean? That didn't get the opportunity, you know, so. So you got you to gotta, you work hard on both sides, the, the, the football exactly. football field or whatever, whatever sport you're playing, and also in that classroom as well. Right? Uh, absolutely. That makes a big difference. And like I said, he's, like, people don't think – think it's that hard. They think it's, it's just like, okay, I'm just going to catch 100 passes and run 1,000 yards. Yeah. And I'm good to go. And they're going to ah, come man. out the woodworks, you know. <laughs> that's the first thing they're going to ask because they know you can play football. They yeah, know they you can that. play. You know, yeah. You're watching on film, you know what I mean? they like, okay. If they're there, they've seen your film and they want you. Right. So then becomes the question of, let me see them grades. Send me that transcript. <laughs> let me do this. Let me do that. You know what I mean? And that's something also, that's something. another hat that I wear to help these kids out. You know what I mean? Um, like, hey, you need a recommendation letter. You know what I mean? I'll write recommendation mm-hmm. letter. I've done dozens of those, you know, over the years. Not and, and it's not even for all ways for kids trying to play college football. But it could be just for kids um, wanting to go to college for academic reasons. Period. But yeah. need a couple uh, letters of recommendation. And I'm like, oh, well, you can always depend on me. Like, I got you. You know what I mean? Even though um, I, I deal with you in the athletic capacity, I understand, like, how important it is academically. Um, to get everything done, man, to fit that criteria, you know what I mean? So, no, nah, no, nah, it definitely makes sense, man, because you know, like you said, it's not always guaranteed you don't get you don't get that that, that chance to go to that, le- that next level. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it's you know millions of kids out there doing the same thing that you do, running that football. Mm-hmm. You know I'm saying, there's the kids out there. Sorry about that, y'all. Because we, y'all know where we at. We have other choices. So it's always something going on. Um, it means the kids out there running that football, carrying that football, catching that football. I'm saying competing at a, you know what I'm saying, trying to get the next level. But, you know what I mean? You got to have that extra, you know what I'm saying, whatever it is to get you past that level. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like some of these jokers come out of school, bro. I'll be seeing them, man. Like I said, six six, three hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> they, you know, they they playing a lot, but they running like they, you know what I'm saying, like they wide receivers. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, man. yeah, yeah. So you got to be able to compete at all levels, man. You know what I'm saying and a lot of these kids, they go they go to college. Um, you know, what I mean, some do get drafted maybe a year two, you know, year two early. Mm-hmm. I mean, but most of them stay all four years to get the only get that experience. But they get that degree because it's not guaranteed. You know, I mean, you get to get on that field. Like you said, you know, one minute you you healthy, you out there running around. Next minute you on the sideline. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got a cast on your yeah, leg. Then you figuring out what happened, what you gonna <laughs> do next. You know, it hits you that fast. Life, football, anything, it hits you that fast. Mm-hmm. You know, so life in general is just how you roll with the punches, man. I I think boxing is the best analogy. You know what I mean? It's like whether you're answering a bell, whether you're continuing to put your best foot forward in life. You know, mm-hmm. so like after after you take a little beat and you know what I mean, if things aren't going your way, or maybe you won't build, or maybe you don't know your next step, or maybe you're trying to figure it out, you know, that's all it like. So what you gonna do? You gonna fold, throw in a towel, you gonna, you know, you're gonna get up off that stool and say, I'm still fighting and I know I'm gonna get the best of you. I don't know if it's now and I can't see it, but I have faith that if I keep swinging, keep putting my best foot forward that I'll get to the other end, and guess what? Some rounds are going to be better than others. Some rounds, you're going to go back to that corner like, got him. I know I did. I laid a good one on him. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to continue. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so, like, that's what life is. It's, you know, this is working. I got to do more. I got to, you know what I mean, be busy. And you kind of, you know, strategize and put yourself in position to be successful, you know. And then the, in the time that you're not or you have a little bit of mishap or whatever like that, I tell anybody, man, whether it's my my athletes, whether it's um, colleagues, whatever, mm-hmm. I'm like, there ain't no losses, you know. It's nah, learned. Nah, it's experiences, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and hurdles that you got to overcome. You know what I mean? If it's a loss, you make it a loss. That's that's, a, that's like a personal decision if you make it a loss. Yeah. Um, so you, you – Unfortunately, you didn't get to that level. You decided to go ahead and teach in the, in the, in the public school system. Yeah. And you didn't enjoy that too much. <laughs> but, you was, love, but you still, you still love the kids, though. So yeah. You, you yo, know. it wasn't that bad. You know, it was it, it was really um because the kids, and, and I think this is, um you know, I mean, broad spectrum, of course, is just like, you know, if you love the kids, do it for the kids. It shouldn't matter. Nobody else. You got to understand, as an adult, <laughs> those aren't the people that you have to answer to. You got to answer to the higher-ups. There's the people in the suits that's like, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that. And you know what I mean? It's not 
You know, I ain't name dropping or nothing like that, but <laughs> not everybody uh, has those best intentions or even know what they're talking about. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. So you can have five degrees, but do you know what's best for that kid in that situation? Can you relate to that kid in that situation? Probably not, you know, but because you have that authority, you know, sometimes it's ill-advised authority, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah, or yeah, ignorant yeah, authority. Yeah, exactly. And it ain't nothing wrong with that person personally. They just don't they just know don't or know. have the yeah. knowledge, you know. Like, it's not a lot of things you could control at that level. So I'm like, if I love the kids and I want to do this and I want to have this impact, you know what I mean, then I should be able to maneuver and set myself up on my own platform so I could create whatever I want to, whether it's content, whether it's apparel, whether it's me wearing nine hats under a brand, creating a brand, mm -hmm. just starting out with business cards and going to these games and limping around after after knee surgery, like, hey, man, Trey <laughs> Playmaker Athletics. Trey <laughs> Playmaker, you know what I mean? That's like, a crazy game. sight. So you, uh, no, you as a physical up. trainer, limping around, talking about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> about like, this guy is. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, like a week out of a week out of knee surgery, man. They had um the All Star game, you know, and um I know the thing, right? Um, no, 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 no. Nah, this is like years ago. So it was at TCMJ, it was still at TCMJ. Okay. And um, I had a couple kids that I was coaching at Hopewell there, so you know, or, or that I was training. So I'm like, all right, well, first order in business is I gotta make an appearance. You know, I gotta <laughs> save my face, I gotta smile, I gotta mm -hmm. shake hands kids babies all that type of stuff you know what i mean um and i had you know my family type would just pleading with me like yo like i'm bleeding through my bandages you know my stitches <laughs> ain't well yet it's and i'm you know what i mean sit down and i'm like no 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 you know what i mean i gotta you know do this while i you know and then i suffer for it later you, you know just, you just that you wasn't understand. the smart yeah that wasn't the smartest thing but going there and and holding those appearances and stuff stuff like that getting my name out there getting my face out there on social media and um you know what i mean just just media in general uh, doing that you know that was a big so even to this day like my my knee wasn't the best at the time but at least that paid off i was kind of forward thinking like i didn't have nothing i ain't have no money i ain't have i'm still trying to figure my life out i'm a week out of you know what i mean um knee surgery so i'm probably still sedated or on you know on, <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, prescription <laughs> stuff and i'm like i gotta you know what i mean i gotta i can't even bend my knee i can't even get up the stuff when you said that too prescription stuff <laughs> yeah because i didn't want to say nothing i was like oh close down on that heavy stuff yeah. no prescription stuff prescribed by the doctor because i have reconstructive <laughs> knee surgery you know Make so that vaguely clear exactly because we have an <laughs> epidemic going on out here man and yeah, i ain't cool yeah, exactly, you know exactly Definitely not. Yeah, <laughs> that's not, not the way. You know <laughs> yeah, mean? it's not. It's not, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the hard work to put into everything to build a brand. You know what I'm saying to 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 nourish it. You know what I'm saying like, like it's, a, it's a child. You got to do that. You know what I'm saying you got to start from baby. you know from the beginning. You know what I mean, plant that seed. You know what I mean, and, and you know what I'm saying feed it, and nurture it. You know what I'm saying and watch it grow and walk. You know what I'm saying pretty soon. You know, hopefully after all your hard work, the shit takes legs. And so I run off by itself. You just sit back like, okay, now this thing's just moving. Nah, yeah, you know I mean, exactly. You so, still gotta put, you have your hands on, but you yeah. see that the, the fruits of your labor is starting to pay off. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of kids don't understand that. Like, it's not just getting up here and like, oh, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. Nah, yeah. you gotta put some work in. You gotta a lot, put some work in. A lot, a lot. You being an entrepreneur, basically, I mean, that's ain't the 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 Webster's definition, but it's you betting on yourself. Is you saying. Whatever it is, if I cook, if I clean, mm -hmm. if I mow lawns, if I'm a personal trainer, if I cut hair, I, I'm creating my own platform, my own service, I'm creating my own revenue, I have my own products, you know what I mean, and, and people are going to mess with me based off my likelihood, um, my service, my products, and all these type of things, and I'll be able to earn a living doing that right. that's the ultimate that's the betting ultimate on goal. yourself is paying the, paying the bills and keeping a roof over your head and <laughs> gas in your car doing what you love to do so it's not like don't get in it for the wrong reasons like i want to be a boss and i want my employees on me i want to you know don't do it because of that because the boss is the last one to get paid you know uh, <laughs> you know he has to do all the work yes, he got yes. all the stress you know what i mean he yeah, the one that got the sure, gray airs sure he, he the one that got the stress paid, out during holiday time i make sure the product get out you make sure the customers is happy you know what i'm saying because all that falls on him mm -hmm. at the end of the day 
And then, and then it's time away from your family, man, and other things that you could you could be doing, you know. So it's the ultimate, it's the ultimate sacrifice. Whereas, like, if you're doing something for eight hours a day, you gotta break it into you know segments, and then like, eight hours is just a small fraction of the day. Then you could go home and do other well, things or whatever, days, use your creative power, or other things. But... Sometimes days don't end till we start first thing in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, don't end till nine, ten, eleven, twelve o'clock at night. Yeah, depending on the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, when I leave here, you know, man, I got to make a phone call to a uh, owner of a professional team, man, and trying to trying to get um sponsors, you know, and trying to get um my team in a in the arena venue. You know, last year my seven on seven team played at MetLife Stadium, you know, man, which was mm. groundbreaking, you know, what I mean, yeah, and, really, um, that's, that's, you know, that's, awesome. That's, everybody that's loved it, man. yeah, everybody loved it. The parents, the kids, and everything like that, man. So, I mean, just building a brand. That's the doors that I that I'm able to open. If I don't have that platform, or I don't have that brand, I might not even be in those eyes. I might not even get that phone call to have a team to get there. Right. You know what I mean? So it's the little details, it's the groundwork that you make to create the steps, and it's the steps that you take to try to more steps, more steps, more steps until you could create your own platform. The like thing, I could the do thing other I love things. the most about, about, about what you're doing, bro, is that you come from a, a city, a small city even though it's the capital of the state, you know what I'm saying, where a lot of people don't give uh, uh, respect due to where true talent come out of this town. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? All, all, in, all, in all perspectives, like from, you know, whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying, Without athletics or academics or music or whatever, you know what I mean, people don't see it because they always overshadowed by a lot of other stuff that's going on in our city. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And my hat go off too, to you because you're, making, you're showing these kids it's more to it than this this little neighborhood right here. And I said, don't get me wrong, I love my city. Mm-hmm. I love where I come from. Yeah. But it's way more to this world than than this I'm saying the little four blocks that you know. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And they said having the opportunity not only to play at the Met Stadium, but to travel to play other teams in different areas, like all right, meet different people and socialize mm-hmm. and network. You know what I mean? Showing them how you know what I'm saying this is this type of, and then you know, five, ten years from now, this is my people the people you're gonna be playing with, probably somewhere at college or if you make it to the next level in the NFL. You know what I mean? So you got to get to know these people now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So and, and make your make your mark now, mm-hmm. and so prove that you use more to you than just I'm from Trenton. Exactly. Even though that's that's a theme song. Exactly. <laughs> hey, it's all movie. good, baby. But, you, you know, know man, you got to know where you came from, you know, man, so you know where you where you going, you know. And I'm and I'm a um, I'm an avid, you know, um, I'm an avid supporter of the area, you know, the Trenton area or whatever like that. You know, I wouldn't be doing as much as I. As I do at the area, I'm, you know, I go to Trenton High games. You know, I got kids that play over there. Um, I've been to a away game. You know, I've been, you know, all over the place and doing philanthropy in the area or whatever like that. Um, I got kids, you know, at all colleges all over now because this is my fourth year. My fourth, fifth year doing it, you know, let's say five, year five, um, because it was like a half a year. So we'll count the extra year. Um, so this is my fifth year doing it. And it's, um, I got kids at St. Francis University. I got kids at Central Connecticut State. I got kids at UConn. I got a kid at Millersville University. I got a kid at Valley Forge. I got kids at Hudson Valley, Lackawanna College. I got a kid right now getting ready to play in the National Junior College um, um, a football game in Kansas. You know, they're the number two team in the nation. They're playing the number one team in the nation. He's from Trenton. That's a kid that... You know, man, I was training at six o'clock in the morning, you know, man, coming off injuries or whatever like that. And his uh his his pops and his family were some of the first very avid supporters of Playmaker Athletic. Before it was anything, it was just me and look, I trust you with my kid, I trust you with his development. You know, man, and he's going to do, you know, big things and I hope he brings that ring back home to Trenton. Mm-hmm. You know, so definitely um, even even me playing, man, I try to tell kids I give them they like little stories, little snippets, you right, know. Right, so right, right. I tell one of the things I tell them, man, I'm like I remember um going down to play Old Dominion University at Monmouth University. Um we took the took a bus down there. Um and I, I forgot what part of Virginia is in, but uh, I was in Virginia. And I've never, I mean, Ewing High, even Ewing Trenton rivalry games, man, like those probably be the biggest games. Might be a few thousand. You know what I mean? But we're talking right. about 30,000 people yeah, that's in a stadium. Right. <laughs> and, and like, I, you know, you practice all week, but nothing compares to that. So you're there. You can't even hear yourself think and talk and speak. And it's at night. 
you know, and it's and it's a little warm outside, and and the, and the fans are heckling you. That's another thing. College football, real college football. <laughs> they know your mom name, they know your address, they know where you're from. They heckling you. Go back and do it, you know what I mean? Da, 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 and all this type of stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I remember, you know, calling my boy uh, day before the game, man. I'm like, yo, like. I know I, I put on this bravado, like, you know, I'm the playmaker. I'm Darwin. I'm I'm this and that. But I'm like, yo, I'm playing in front of 30,000 people. And tomorrow will be my first ever start. And he kind of gave me like a, it's what you do, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, <laughs> don't let it get bigger than what it is. Like, go out there and do what you do. do. Exactly. And just that subtle statement that he made gave me like, you know what? Yeah, let me fix my, yeah I am. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I did well. And we ended up winning that game. You know, and um, and then uh, also another little quick story in college, man. And um, jo- Josh Norman, all pro in the NFL, man. Like they love that story. I'm like, yo, my first ever catch in collegiate was against Josh Norman at Coastal Carolina. You know what I mean? I ain't fade him up. I ain't hit him with a post and score a touchdown tonight. It was a hitch route, but nevertheless, you know what I mean? Like you know, so I done played against some very, very good guys that played in the NFL. And I don't play with some guys that played in the NFL that were very good, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, but going back to just a kid from Trenton in a small town, you know what I mean? Down the street from here, I used to be running up and down, you know, South Logan, playing with adults, playing tackle football in the concrete and go from that to playing in a 30,000 30,000 people stadium, hey, you know what I mean? Have the to, NFL workouts, man. Crazy, man. That's playing, only God. Playing over down the street on concrete. <laughs> that's, how we, <laughs> that's how we do it, too. Right? That's, how that, we that's what, that was that's the that's way of life, that's man. That's you know, if you didn't want to do that, you wasn't playing. You better yeah. go back in the house, play video games <laughs> or something, you know? <laughs> Especially when the snow came down, like, it was a wrap. Man. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was your cushion was right there. So <laughs> don't hit a little black ice patch or something, you know? You be beat up. You go home, man, I don't you know, you, you get a double beating. You hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Mama is a what division two school? Division one double F. They call it FCS now. So Rutgers is what? Uh division one. FBS. Division one. So basically that's up there with Ohio State and all that. Yeah, yeah, schools, yeah. Right? They play those soccer schools. You know I mean, mm-hmm. um so you think that your uh if you if you if your if your your, 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 your SAT scores was up, your GPA was up, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and if you had offers from like Rutgers and other places, if you played for a school like Rutgers compared to Mama, mm-hmm. do you think your opportunities would have been a little bit different or Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like um is it fair? No. Does people come from smaller schools, even smaller schools than Mama? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and make it absolutely shout out to Monmouth University, number twelve in the nation in FCS now, and this is the first time in, since I can even remember that they'll be in a national playoffs, you know what I mean? So go get that ring, boys, you know what I mean? Congratulations. Um, proud alumni. But, you know, um, opportunities is everywhere. But maybe do you have a better connection to the, that world? Mm-hmm. Yes, for the simple reason that more alumni has played there. So when you have things like that, they're going to go back like, you know what? I want to see this person. Right. You know, like, okay, well, you gave me a cornerback before that playing for the Falcons and all pro. I want to go back and find another guy, you know, and it's all about those coaches in that relationship because it's like a, it's like a revolving door. So a lot of college, um, a lot of college coaches coaching in the NFL and vice versa. So right. a lot of them be buddy buddies like, hey, I'm looking for a wide receiver. Hey, I got a wide receiver. You know what I mean? He's a junior. He's da, 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 da. Come check them out. You know, when I was at Mom, if I remember, we had um guy from Lawrence, man. Um, I was a freshman. He's a fifth-year senior. And we had – um, well, he had about every NFL scout there. So imagine being 17 years old. You know, I'm from there. I'm, I'm out there, and I see the Chargers. And I see mm-hmm. the Steelers. Then I see the Seahawks. Then I see um, then I see the Rams. You know what I mean? And I'm like, and they're sitting there with their polo hats, taking notes and stuff like that. <laughs> Again, yeah, extra motivation. You think you're getting signed right in there, but it's just like, you know what? It's gonna be motivational for practice. Whoever in front of me gonna get it. You're gonna get it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they gonna see me. You know. So um, that was that was the mentality, man. But that experience, man, was you know everything, man. That's what's up, man. I mean, because really people know, like. You're right, cause you yeah you got players from all over all over the world, all over the country. They come from different uh you know uh divisions of different schools and stuff. It's all about that work and how you put it in. Yeah. You know what I mean, but it is always you know some some form of sense political stuff always going on. You know what I mean, yeah. Speaking of political political things, 
so they gave they gave Kaepernick an opportunity to uh to, to practice the uh to show his stuff off yeah. for, for NFL teams, right? Uh-huh. So I heard I was listening to the radio today. Last minute, he changed the venue. Yeah, a half hour before he was supposed to do his thing, yeah. pushed the time back. Yep. I mean, and they moved the venue from the to, from the Atlanta Falcons uh, stadium. Yeah. To a high school uh, football field, almost an hour away. Yeah. In a in a in a, on a Saturday, in a uh, um, in a, a, a Atlanta Georgia's traffic. Mm-hmm. Yep. What you think about that situation, bro? Because because at the end of the day, they had they had, they had 25, 25, 30 teams looking at him originally yeah. was going to be there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying state of the art equipment and all that. Yeah, know what I mean, and then come uh, at the end of the day, it was only like eight teams that showed up to the to the high school uh, yeah. seeing play. Yeah, or seeing train, whatever. Okay, you know what I mean, so what, what was yeah. You, all right, so let's, let's get to the good stuff. You know what I mean? Let's let's get to it. let's pick my brain and see what you know, man. What I believe in. Um. So with that, man, I, I, uh, the reasoning behind it, I haven't talked to Kaepernick, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but what his representation is saying um, is that the reason why he wanted to move it is because he wanted to film. And the NFL, you know, has strict rules against, okay, no film and no media around there or whatever like that. Okay, so we got to understand this. No matter what we do, what we are, but he's bro, whatever, like that. Because they, they said this, that's the NFL agreed to give him the footage, though, mm-hmm. of his of his workout. That's putting a lot of trust in somebody, a lot of trust in somebody that already did you wrong, right? And gave you a settlement based off of them saying we did, you, did wrong. you wrong. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know, do I blame him for saying, you know what, I want to change it to a location where I want to go and have my own people? You know what I mean? Because we got to understand this. We own a lot of things, you know, and for the instance, this podcast, you know, a lot of people is going to watch this and see what I have off to have to offer. Right. A lot of people going to see this, see what you have to offer. We have to control the content. And that starts with media. That starts with radio. It exactly. starts with television. That starts with books and things like that. If you, if you don't have no media, no content, you can't control the rhetoric. So let's say the <laughs> NFL, like, okay, well, we'll give you all the da 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 but they only put up the highlights or send the highlights to him missing throws or doing bad <laughs> to these NFL teams to make him look worse than what he what really he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think him moving there, I think it was a very strategic move. And people be like, oh, well, he doesn't really want to play if he did that. Why would he work out for 45 minutes if, if you know what I mean, for a publicity stunt or if he didn't have um, a, a, a real, you know what I mean, opportunity or he really wanted to play? Because you got to understand we're speaking maybe, you know, pennies and dollars. That man's a millionaire, He's man. millions, yeah. He's a exactly. millionaire. He doesn't yeah. need no money I from mean, NFL. He doesn't I, need I that fact, anything. I mean, would you have uh, – because the thing is, my thing is this. He waited to the last minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, you know what I'm saying? Because the whole time, you know, you're negotiating with the UNFL, I'm, I'm cap. We're mm-hmm. negotiating. You're giving me everything else I want, so why wouldn't you ask for that up front? Yeah. I don't I think mean, it was a negotiation. For what they saying, it's like they kind of laid it off for him. Like, you want to get back in the NFL? You want this? You want this? Well, here's it. Here it is. Right. You right, got to right. be here at this time, this and this. This is the restrictions. This is the limit because when he folks po- first posted it, he posted it like on a Monday. And um, usually open tryouts, whatever, NFL day off is Tuesday. That's what a lot of people don't know. Right, right. Exactly. And that's the right when the usual workout is. So if you give him a workout on Tuesday, wherever he wanted to be or whatever he wanted to go, whatever like that, he'll be able to have those scouts there. Right. You work out in front of the GMs and head coaches. There were no GMs and head coaches there. Why? Not because, not because he changed location. But for the simple fact that yeah, on the Saturday, a lot of was, people got games on Sundays. A right. lot of people got to go to work. Yeah, what a lot of people well. are not in the area. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, So you're not going to get access to all of them. You know what I mean? And as a former NFC Championship quarterback and as a, uh, a former Super Bowl performing quarterback, he almost won it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, we got cheated that year. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got cheated that You year. know? He should have had, uh, you know, that convenience of having the heavy hitters there, which is the head coach's GM, and giving man. him an accurate, a accurate um, evaluation, you know, mm-hmm. so he can, you know, get a job. And that's the thing. It's just like, and I hear stuff all the time. I hear slander. Even, you know, I get it sometimes. I don't say things, you know, out loud because I have to be very strategic about what I post on social media also because you never know um, political, yeah. who thinks <laughs> this, who thinks that. I'm not into politics. 
I'm not here. I'm not trying to run for governor. I'm not the liaison in the NFL, nothing like that. I'm just a man with an opinion. Right, right. You know, right, so right. speaking about that, man, I just feel as though um it was a man that that was wrong. Um and I think him wanting to be in the NFL is more than financial. It's yeah, more he, than he, an he, ego. He, it's he got, it's he got, the he got actual he got purpose. The, he got the settlement. You know what I'm saying? Then he got the, the big check from Nike. Mm-hmm. For his movement, because they 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 like no, we're gonna ride with this. We gonna yep. You know what I mean, we, 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 we gonna put, we, put some Nike put on his back. And, exactly. Let him go ahead and, and we gonna ride that. with him. You know I mean, so definitely it's more. You know, I believe it also was more than a financial type thing. It was more of a statement. You know, what I'm saying that he want to play. That he wanted. You know I'm saying he want to. He want to play. Like he want. He want to get a game. fair opportunity. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like Melo just got an opportunity and played last night. But for the longest, you know what I mean? Like well, he, yeah, he, he was, was out for a year. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? For, for, for whatever reason. We know why Kaepernick was out. There ain't no speculation. Mm-hmm. And then with him taking that knee, man, it just it just pulled off the mask of the real people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was really going on. And people said the most hateful, oh, spiteful crazy, things for taking the knee. About, oh, he hit the military. The third. And he clearly said over and over and over again, it's, it's not, about, not about the military. It's not about that. It's not about, you know what I'm saying? It's about injustice in our communities. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Our people are not getting a fair shake when it comes to the judicial system. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He said it repeatedly, but everybody kept saying, well, like I said, everybody, but people just kept, those people kept yeah, saying, most people, oh, he hates he hate the military. He hates this and this. Yeah, nah. this is what it stands for. This, but I'm just yeah. like, how do you know if you ain't have a conversation with that man and he didn't say it out of it? Like, everything's just speculation. And that's another thing, man. Speculation and perception are two totally different things. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So perception Absolutely. could be what somebody thinks or whatever like that. Speculation is probably like, okay, well, what a few of the masses or the people exactly. in your circle feel as though happen. Either one isn't fact. And <laughs> this exactly. world's supposed to be built on facts. But unfortunately, with social media and all these type of things, we think that perception and we think that speculation is, you know what I mean, what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like if I say, or so, somebody on social media be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a seven-foot giant, you know what I mean, or whatever like that. <laughs> if you never seen me before, you, you know, never talk to me, people believe that. Seven foot. Until I come in. I'm right. not, even though I'm sitting down, they probably still believe it. Then when I stand up, it's like, I don't think he's seven seven. <laughs> That's speculation. That's something that you don't know. You don't know the facts. If you never had right. a conversation with me or been to the doctor while I'm getting better <laughs> or whatever like that, you don't know. You know. Now the other thing that happened this week was uh, the guy from um, what's his name hit the quarterback in the head with the helmet. Yeah, what's his <laughs> name? Uh, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. He played yeah, for what's yeah, his name yeah. um, for the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns. They, they're all rivals. They're in Pittsburgh. They're kind of yeah, rivals. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the game get deep. Yeah. But, you know, we never want to see nobody get hurt or injured yeah. on the field. You know what I'm saying? Um, what did you take on that, man? Like, he, like cause he literally tried to bust this dude in the head with a, yeah. with a helmet. Like, that yeah. could have caused some major damage. Yeah. Let me you tell you mean? something, man. As a football player... I don't know what you I don't know what you'll tab it to. Like maybe a baseball player with a baseball bat or something like that. Like that's the most essential thing that you have is your helmet and it protects you. You know, I just had a, a, a one of my athletes, you know, I mean fully helmeted, everything like that, you know, just took a bad spill, you know, and had a had a concussion, you know, so he's getting back on his feet, man. Mm-hmm. Um, God blessings. Um, so you gotta imagine that even a little league, like you know how you get tired and you sit on your helmet and put that you going to need that, you know, right, put right. it on your head. Oh, you carry it. Don't sit on it. You know what I mean? Because I guess it's something where they say you spread it out. Spread it out. Yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, so it could you. be, you know what I mean? It's not going to protect you it, 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 was, it, was, it was his own. It was, it was his yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Even in college, you know, you, uh, you understand how imperative helmets are to your safety or whatever like that. So he pulled the helmet off another person, then hit him over the head with it. That's like crazy. That's like unprecedented. He should be find uh, uh i mean i'm all for tough football don't get me wrong that ain't tough football that's, that's, that's beating somebody especially a quarterback i can say it was running back <laughs> and somebody has about that life like what's up you know what i mean another lineman or something you see what pounce he did after he's like, after he did that he started i'm like i'm, like, I'm yeah, a Steelers fan so i'm like, like hey, yeah, man, go get him you, 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 yeah you started, kicking yeah, started out, kicking yeah. Him because that instinct kick in like yeah, yo yeah. What, you know what i mean you know you pull 
our second string quarterback. I'm a Steelers fan. You pulled that helmet off of him and beat him over the head with it, man. Like so that's what you said. You know, ain't no excuse for that. No, no excuse at all. Me, no uh, excuse. Like, like, I, love, I, love I don't care if he tried to low blow him, grab his. Right. Blah, 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 blah. It ain't no He's excuse. Get him back on the next play. That. Yeah, get him yeah. back on the next play. And it's at the end of the game, so you got to yeah, understand. Like, the game. You know, unfortunately, I'm a Steelers fan, and we were losing at that point. We were going to lose the game. Yeah. This is seconds. This is like the play before it would have ended the game. Right. Play. All the way over there, just excessive, and then ripped his helmet off. Not like Art. I don't see people get their helmets ripped off. I'll be honest. I don't even see people throw punches right in front of my face. I might or might not have been involved with some of that as I was in my playing career. <laughs> but <laughs> I've never beat somebody over their head with my helmet, nor am I taking my helmet off. But he ain't had no choice. He had his helmet ripped off and beat over the head with it. You know, so you that's an type excuse. Of punishment. And he should get for this for that for that type of action. definitely out for the rest of the year, man. And go find him a couple mil, you know, because because it's not what could have, you know, it's not what happened or oh he's not harmed, he didn't have that da da da. It's what could have happened. That's that's the, the helmet is, is is one of the hardest pieces of equipment on the football field. Is yeah. your helmet? Yeah, it's harder. It's tough. It's harder than your pads, your things, whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that's what, that's the hardest. And you took that that you turned it actually turned it he turned it into a weapon. Yeah, it's a weapon. You know what I mean? Um. I might be a little bit stricter than you know some other people because like I like I love the sport. You know what I'm saying I don't like to see people get hurt. My son, all my all my all my kids love the sports. They play. It, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it, it's crazy because that was my son out there. You know, you grown man or not? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you, I'm, yeah. You <laughs> like man? I'm, I'm about to jump in stand. Yeah, I, you know, he's not just stumping him too. But, yeah, word um, up. Um, Your um, instinct unless, just unless, kick unless you really get some type of serious help, because uh, me personally, I think that's the type of anger issues you might have or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't think he should play in the league anymore because he could really, really, he could have really caused some yeah. serious damage yeah. to that guy. You know what I'm saying? He could have been in jail right now. So yeah. if he would have hit him with that other – so the way it happened, you know, if you guys don't know, the back of the helmet is kind of the most, like, flexible. It's padded. Right. So I don't think he – he ain't even looked to say, oh, I'm going to hit him with the – but he just grabbed it and started, hit started him. Well enough, By yeah. the luck of, you know what I mean, whatever, he hit him with the back end. And it still probably hurt like heck, you know what I mean, even though the your adrenaline pump and whatever. He definitely still felt it. But if he would have flipped that helmet around and hit him with the crown of the helmet, which is the hardest part of your helmet, which is usually if you're running, boom, boom, you're taking shots, is the hardest per- part of your helmet. If he would have knocked him over the temple or the skull with that part, he could have killed him. Could have killed him. You know what I mean? Crushed his, you know what I mean, brain, got him a bad concussion, his brain would have shook in there. You know what I mean? Knocked him out. You know what I mean? Imagine, yeah. imagine seeing that, and that would have been tenfold. Like I said, I think it's more what didn't happen. You know, like, oh, well, he, you know, he was still or whatever. He was okay or whatever like that. But if he would have beat him over the head and, I, and he would have laid on the ground unconscious, yeah. everybody would have been thinking he's dead. Exactly. Exactly. So, like I said, let's, I mean, um, there's no, like I said, there's no excuse for nothing like that in, 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 this, in this sport. We already know it's a tough sport as it is. It's a crazy sport as it is because we always, we always say that, you know, I mean, you got to be some kind of crazy to be willing to run down the field. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get into a car collision. You got to be half crazy, man. Get <laughs> into a man? car collision. But 20 times a game. Severe, that, if it's that situation where you got to react like that, you know what I'm saying? You need some real type of therapy, some yeah. management, something going on. And I don't think he needs to play, man, because who's, who's, who's saying he's not going to happen again next year or who's going to say he play? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So. It needs to be a, a harsh, harsh punishment. I don't know if they – because you got to think, man, NFL is a business. And, um, you know, if, is it better for business for the Cleveland Browns for him to be around? Yes. If it, is it better for the NFL for him to be around? Yes. You know, so I, I, I think a lot of things. And that's what comes back to the political stuff. It's what's right. right, what should be done, and what's best for business and, you know what I mean, the politics of it all. So it's just like, you know, if he goes there with a sincere apology and all this type of stuff, you know, compared to what could have happened or what he – uh, or what he did, you know, mm-hmm. he could get a slap on the wrist, and it's like, all right, we ain't you giving me one more chance. You know, it could be one more chance to harm somebody in an even worse way, right, or right. he might learn from his mistake. Who knows? But if they want to make it a prime example. Like, I mean, look, they, they did, they, they listen, they didn't did worse. Well, they get worse punishments to players that have that, that done way less. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Antonio Brown. Like, he's not playing right now just because he went around his mouth on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Cap, you know what I'm saying? He kneeling because he believes in social justice. Mm-hmm. Now, this man tried to take somebody's head off with a professional football helmet. And he pro- he possibly might get a job or reinstated before Kaepernick. 
you got people that abuse alcohol and drugs and harmed other people. You have people that was up for vehicular manslaughter. You have people that have done, um, you know, domestic violence cases and other things that you got people that, you know what I mean, have federal cases pending against them that got opportunities to go, you know, go back or whatever like that. And uh, that is, that has done illegal stuff. But, you know, go back to the cop situation, I'm like, he took a knee and a stand for injustice. And it's like, boy, you would think he he did something very bad to somebody. <laughs> like, he, would, like he bust somebody in the head with a yeah, helmet. <laughs> yeah, like he bust somebody over the head with a helmet and he killed him or something, you know. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, my God, it's a murder. You know, like to have people boycott and stuff, like, oof, that, that's America. You yeah, know, that's, yeah. that's, that's the real America. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know? But before we get out of here, though, we gonna talk about because we brought some stuff uh, with you today. Mm-hmm. For one, real quick, these are the uh, the playmaker keychains, seven dollars each, right? Yep, seven dollars each. This is uh, these, uh, all proceeds is going to to the, the dinners for the uh, yeah the dinners for the homeless for, for the, the homeless for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So playmaker keychains, I got mine. It's over there somewhere. That's, right? <laughs> That's my dog, no, man. man. Um, you know I mean, these, these nice, they nice, they nice. You know what I'm saying they uh. I like the color, the material, and everything is good. Mm-hmm. So quality is well good. You know what I'm saying it's only seven dollars. So make sure you hit my man Dog up for mm-hmm. your keychain. You know what I mean? This is all proceeds. Am I correct? All proceeds goes to yep. the food for the homeless. Uh, they're gonna give out the day before Thanksgiving, which is next Wednesday. Yes. So make sure y'all get these uh, by this end of this week. You know what I'm yeah. saying definitely. Yeah. And so what else we got going on? Here? Um. So this, you know, what I mean wristband. Okay, it has. Uh, I got one on right now. You probably can't see it, but. Playmaker Athletics it has the logo. The packaging also has the logo. I paid extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, good market. Uh, That's good market. Yeah, <laughs> and on the back of that, it says make plays. I wanted something very simple that you could put on a wristband. And like, I joke with the kids. I'm like, hey, if you forgot, forget what to do in life. You know, then it's like in quotation marks, make plays. You know, so that, that don't even got to be on a football field or a basketball court or whatever. It's in life general. Just in life in general. Put your best foot forward and be the best you can. In any situation that you present yourself, that's what a true playmaker is. Also, um, I have sleeves, black and white. Now, this was a hit during football season. You know what I mean? A lot of kids done got sleeves and stuff like that. Um, and now basketball season is coming, and you're gonna need shooting sleeves. You know what I mean? You're gonna need something to go with them home and away jerseys. The white go real well with the away jerseys. If you got some black in your, you know, your home. I mean, this is universal, but if you got some black in your, um your home away jerseys, whatever like that, man. You know, the black looks Definitely. real good. Definitely. Great material. It doesn't slide on you at all. You know, uh, sweat resistance. And it got that big logo, Playmaker, <laughs> you know what I mean, on there. So you know exactly, uh, you know, what you got on there. Um, I got flyers for the 7-on-7 uh, seven seven tryout. Okay. Okay. Um, December 15th. Uh, December 15th at 1, 1 p.m. to 2.30. Okay, um, ages 14 to 18 is going to be on Peak Turf in Ewing, New Jersey, 1440 Lower Ferry Road, Trenton, New Jersey. Also, if you're not interested in the 7 on 17 or whatever like that, but you want to get your kids in a group setting to train or whatever like that, I'll have eight sessions at the same location, 1440 Lower Ferry Road, Trenton, New Jersey at Peak Turf. That'll be 1030 to 12 o'clock um, starting January 4th. So count that every Sunday. And then, and I'll give you my social media when we, you know, we wrapping up now, but I'll have all that stuff on there. Or even if you want to DM me on my, uh, my, my business page or whatever like that, you know, I'll be able to get all that information, whether you want some product. We also have shorts, we have shirts, long sleeve, we have hoodies, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got shirts, <laughs> we got shirts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tickle my funny bone, you know what I mean? That's, that's my brother, man. Um, so any questions, you know, you guys want to ask or whatever like that, that I didn't answer here, or, you know, if you want, if your kid or you are interested in training, mm-hmm. meal plan, meal prep, shaping, toning, you need a workout plan, you need somebody to work you out, you need your kid trained, you need somebody to work with all, with, with all that, so. you know what I mean, all that stuff there. And I got more flyers for you, you know what I mean, I'll say my, um, my, my social media, but before, before I do that, you know what I mean? Last time I got, I came here. I you know, mm-hmm. okay. nah, I got you. Last time I came here, I was unprofessional and I didn't bring anything for the host. And this is like my brother. <laughs> I've been training his kids for almost like three years now, you know, and um, and he done helped me out a lot, you know, between him and his wife, 
fundraising, you know what I mean, helping proceeds, help lessening the blow of me charging kids X amount of dollars for the team or whatever like that so I can make it accessible to everybody. So this man right here does a lot for Playmaker Athletics behind the scene. So it ain't just a po- podcast. When I say this is my brother, <laughs> this is my brother. Absolutely, so, absolutely. you know what I mean? I need my brother to be laced. So when he at work and he working out, whatever like that, man, you know what I mean? I got I hope you could fit it. You know what I mean? This is my man right here. All right. This is yours, brother. Appreciate that. You know what I mean? I love you and everything love that you, you too, do, bro. man. Appreciate All right, that. word up. <laughs> That's see what it is, man. You know I mean, playmakers, you know what I'm saying, in the building. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? This is how we do it, man. You know what I mean? That's what's up. That's definitely what's up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it on air. Shock him! I didn't even tell him I was gonna have anything or do anything. So this is genuine, right here. <laughs> I mean, great, you bring all the promo. Like, you shout everything out. Bring all the promo. That's how we doing it. Also, let people know what's going on. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But the big, like I said, we big on um, giving back. Listen, seven dollars for these keychains, man. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it'll help feed the homeless on a, on a holiday. A lot of people do still. Uh, a lot of people celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, turn into a special day for you and your family, for, for those who do celebrate it. But this is for those who can't celebrate with nobody, you know what I'm saying, who have nobody, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to celebrate with, you know what I mean, and they, they are there on their own in the cold. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, my man is doing his thing. So $7 just for the key chain, uh, the key chain you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Can't beat it, you know what I'm saying? Playmaker uh, Athletics. I told you I got mine. I got three of them at the house right now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. They get their oh, whole man. family wearing it, you That's know. Right. So they That's represent, doing, man. man. And real quick, before I drop my stuff, man, um, shout out to the person that does the shirts and apparel and everything like that. I couldn't forget about you, uh, Sire Brown. Yeah, right. um, yeah what up, yeah, Scoop? Yeah, uh, Big Bang, Big Bang Theories, you know, man. Graphics and everything like that, man. He laces with that. He uh, does the uniforms for my seven on seven team. I just took a basketball team down to Brooklyn. We won by twenty. You know what I mean? They had um, the uh in the uh the net stadium. Yep, at the Barclays Center. Barclays yep, Center, yeah, the, the Barclays Center. Center. Yeah, yeah. Where Kyrie and all them people play at, man. So that was great for Playmaker Athletics. That's coming with uh expanding a brand and whatever I want to get drawn up or whatever like that, man. He's the creative between you know a lot of the apparel that we do, pr- pretty much all the apparel that we do, uniforms and everything like that, man. So if you need to hit him up individually, if you have a team, if you need to get anything done, contact him. If you need his information, you know what I mean? Then uh, you can reach out to me or him, you know, and then the boys that's what that another too. one of our brothers that's in the circle, but, you know what I'm saying? Ex- so that, exactly. That we constantly work and I'm an avid so. believer in, like, keeping everything, you know, in the family. You know what I mean? You had a mob ties, you know? So yeah. you got somebody that does the comedy shows and I can have my family, you know, there enjoying the time and I can help my brother out. He does, you know, the clothing and apparel, you know, and then he he brings his sons to me so they could continue to get trained. They're on my 707 yeah. team I'm every like, year. Yeah, you've seen at the comedy show, like, listen, man, is that bucket filled up yet with dollars? Yeah, yeah. Stop playing, man. Yeah, exactly. You're not making these people dollars in that bucket, you know what I'm saying? That's donations. You know what I'm saying for these kids go a long way, man. You know what I'm saying because give them a lot of opportunities to do different things that, that they thought they never could be able to do. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it boils down to it is about these kids. You know what I mean? Keeping them out of trouble, keep them, keep them out of harm's way, keeping them focused. You know what I'm saying? Making them believe that they are the greatest they could be. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And you have to do that because you know, like I say, it's a lot of distractions growing up. As you, we all know this, we was kids at one point in time. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We got sidetracked, did different shit different things and wish we did diff- things differently. So let's make sure we have our kids the opportunity to do those things differently. You know I mean, they don't have to go down the same paths, you know I mean, make some of the same mistakes that we made. You know what I'm saying? This is why we're here doing this. You know what I mean? Um, but real quick, I don't be all preachy and all that. You know what I mean? Right. Come on, man. <laughs> this, this is your platform, you know what I mean? And you're not saying anything that the viewers don't need or the kids don't need. Exactly. You know what I mean? But forget about it. Let me know you know, your contact info, social, you know what oh, I mean? Media okay. and all that. Not your social security number, social media. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what about social security number? <laughs> That's another <laughs> we, we working on all that. All that. So. <laughs> it's, all a, right. it's a work in progress. <laughs> Yo, what my stuff? You're like, darn, man. Yeah. Oh, so um, <laughs> you right back. Like, no, you it. <laughs> yeah, goddamn, I picked the wrong one. Nope, that's what you get. Uh, um, so my Facebook, <laughs> I gotta get this out. Uh, so my my Facebook, um, uh, my business page is um, Playmaker Athletics, P L A Y M A K E R Athletics. Um, just, just how it's spelled, you know what I mean? And, um, how it's pronounced and, um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram also. It's playmaker underscore athletics. So P-L-A-M-A-K-E-R underscore athletics. All right. Um, you'll see the logo on there, so you'll know right away. Um, can't miss that logo. Bro. You know, you can't miss that logo. logo. You know what I mean? I done branded this thing everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? We almost everywhere, man. We we in the volleyball. We in the soccer, football, basketball, you know, every day wear, you know, all that type of stuff, man. So, you know, God Big be the plays, Lord. bro. Yeah, Big the plays. brand's been out there. Wristbands, keychains, <laughs> sleeves, you know what I mean? Shorts, hoodies, you know, it's all over the place. So, shirts. <laughs> shirts. <laughs> so, you'll know right away when you see it. And, uh, you know, I, if it's a business question or a question that you could have, you could uh, contact me on that social media. If your parents or you're not as, you know, um, technical, technology savvy you can um email me if that's better because people you know what i mean they'll do mm -hmm. email so playmaker underscore athletics at yahoo.com exactly how you know i said it on my uh facebook and my instagram okay i got a website coming soon um yeah that's a you know that's about it man everything's it. cooking up man and um you know just continue to put my best foot forward man and uh make sure i give these kids you know people around here opportunity you know, that um that was a lot of to me, you know what I mean, through good graces, you know, and um if we could if we could reach one, we could teach one. Exactly. You know, so exactly. as long as we could do that, man, we could help our community in the area. Yeah, I told you before, like I look at you as a uh, as a I ain't gonna say little brother because you taller than me, but <laughs> as a younger bro, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I appreciate what you're doing, man, saying I'm proud of what you do. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I look forward to uh see you doing bigger and better things, you know what I'm saying? And we got to get that thing bumped off we talking about before because dude going to give us the opportunity to burn down that stadium. So, exactly, exactly. You, know, you, you know got some man? things in the works, that stadium you know what I mean? Out, you got know? some things in the works. So. Like I said, you <laughs> here, and you like, I love what he's doing. We already hit, that's you know what right. I mean? We that's already, right. you know, setting some things up. So I got to make that phone call when I leave out of here. <laughs> Entrepreneur work is never done. Never done. Not when you're really, you know what I mean, trying to get after it and make an impact out here in this in this world. So, uh, any shout outs real quick before you go? No. Um, uh, no, uh, no, no name specifically, you know what I mean? Other than the ones that I, that I named, man. But, you know, um, shout out to every parent, every athlete, everybody that, that helped me, anybody that ever, you know what I mean? Um, I trained your kid. I trained you, you know what I mean? Everybody, you know, you are the motivate motivating factor you are the driving factor between behind playmaker athletics you know and and you guys wake me up every day without an alarm clock with my purpose knowing that it's people depending on me it's a change that i can make it's people that believe in me most importantly you know what i mean and um just help me reach the goals that you know what i mean that i set out for myself man so I, I'm not going to let you guys down. I'm going to keep pushing forward, man. Of course, you know, everything's through God. But most importantly, man, I want to make you guys proud and make sure that, you know, we get everything that we came for, you exactly. know, and more. Exactly. So definitely be looking look out for the uh, the 707 tryouts mm -hmm. on December 15th, you know what I mean? Make sure y'all hit hit the brother for the, the key chains, you know what I mean? And all y'all, the, 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 the sleeves, you got them right here for all your basketball players, football players. They, they're available for y'all, man. Mm -hmm. And, and also the, the wristbands too, you know what I'm saying? Make sure we support our, our young, you know what I'm saying, black brothers, you know what I'm saying? When they, have to, when they out there doing the right thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And entrepreneurship in a positive way. Because people can be entrepreneurs in another negative way, but <laughs> we're doing it in a positive way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, as always, I want to give my shout outs, you know what I'm saying? To the wife, the family, you know what I'm saying? Love y'all, everybody support what we do, you know what I'm saying? Um, of course, my man, Blessed Child, Shout him out for the uh, sponsors of the Blog Talk Radio, Stressed Out Radio. Of course, shout out to Miss Howard because you know she gives the opportunity to do our thing here at uh, Howard Healthy Choices Community uh, Culture Center. You know I mean, um, everybody, you know what I'm saying to support the taking my funny boat comedy shows. We don't look out because we're doing bigger and better things. Come January 18th, we're back in the building, we're taking holidays off. Let y'all spend time with y'all family. Let, let me spend time with my family too because my mic will kill me. <laughs> you are know, never home, like baby. Works like I said, work is never done. That's the sacrifice we make, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I love it. I, I mean, appreciate mm -hmm. all the support she gives me. The same thing with my, with my family, my kids, everybody support everything I do. They see the vision, you know what I'm saying? Because they ride along with me, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, um, shout out to everybody as always. Uh, tune in again next week. Kids Speak, you know what I'm saying? The podcast for the kids that's made by the kids. You know what I'm saying? They got the voices too, you know what I'm saying? So make sure you listen to what they got to say because, um, you know, they have feelings and they got they, they, they see the world in different ways and as well. So we gotta be able to listen to them. We have to listen to them and explain to them what this world is about 
and how they can do better and achieve, you know what I'm saying, the things that we wasn't able to do. I mean, so Kids Peace Podcast is back next Wednesday as always. I'm back again on Saturday with another uh, uh, Global Underground Podcast is never done. Um, you know, he's yeah. got to come with special guests. And, um, you know, we hear, oh, uh, how can kill me if I'm going to be out there, right? Shout out. So uh, we got the, the holiday uh, raffle going on here. I, um, how I uh, have the choices. Make sure y'all get your tickets. They $5. Uh, three, three, it's, a, it's a meat raffle for those who eat meat. You know what I mean? Uh, you get these three prizes. Uh, I think the top prize is over two hundred fifty dollars worth of meat, different types of meats and stuff like that. Um, December seventh, we're here for the book signing here at How I Have the Choices. You know what I'm saying, so make sure you're in the building for that. Um, we'll keep announcing that. Make sure I get uh, exact time and all that. But December seventh, we're here. So, um, and that's about it, man. Shout out to everybody for following, watching. Love y'all. You know what I'm saying, we out of here. Peace. <laughs>